Hello, I'm Christine Chavon, and our show is Spiritual Exploration. Tonight, we're going to explore food and spirituality, and we're going to do that with my very welcome guest, Linda Principato from Whole Health and Wellness. And she's here tonight to talk to us about how some of the foods we eat can make us more spiritual. Welcome, Linda, to the show. Thank you, Christine. I'm happy to be here. Uh, it's my pleasure to have you. Listen, we'll get started right away. Tell me, what is the connection between food and spirituality? Well, it's very basic. Um, we can't, we're of the earth, and food is nature's gift to us. It's actually, you can look at it as God's little love notes to us. Uh -huh. So when we eat whole foods, foods that are grown of the earth, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, as opposed to processed foods, we reconnect with our spirituality through the connection with the earth and the universe. I see. So in other words, then, uh, whole foods keep us spiritual more than uh, foods that have a lot of uh, preservatives and things like that in them. Exactly. Exactly. There's a disconnect with processed foods. When our diet is based in whole foods, um, it, uh, spirituality encompasses a lot more than just the foods that we're eating. So what you need to do is have um, not only right diet, but right livelihood, right associations, um, good spiritual practice, meditation. And when you bring whole foods into your diet, it allows you to enhance your spirituality. So it does encompass other areas of your life, but the food is definitely a big connection. I see. Well, tell us, how can food change us spiritually or enhance our spirituality? Well, for example, if you are um, eating a diet that is predominantly processed foods, mm -hmm. um, foods that aren't real, there's no connection there. There's no energy in the food. The food has the same nutrients. Um, a good example would be if you took a raw almond and you took a roasted almond, you planted them both in the ground, the raw almond is going to sprout. The roasted almond is going to rot. So when you look at food in this way, what food do you want to bring into your body? You want to bring the food that has life energy, that has a life force. That's going to become assimilated into your body, and it's much better to be eating that way than to be eating something that doesn't have such a life force anymore. Are you saying that, that, that these foods should be eaten raw? Raw foods, yes. Um, whole foods do have a good life force in them, even if they are cooked. Mm -hmm. But a raw diet is um, really a very beneficial way to eat. Um, it's hard in our society to follow a raw foods diet. Um, so if, if you could just get 50% raw food into your diet, it would make a huge difference. Really, in other words, you're, you're suggesting that we eat fruits and vegetables that are the way they are, the way the, the one they were picked. The way nature gave them to us. The way nature mm, gave right. them to us. Right. Now then, cooking them, you're saying, uh, take something out of them. Cooking it does deplete its energy, um, it, depending on how much you cook. You could take some fresh vegetables and lightly steam them, and they're still going to have a nice life force. They're still going to be vital. Mm -hmm. um, and they are very nutritious. You can cook that food down. Some people have digestive issues. They can't really digest. Their, their systems just aren't used to it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the problem that a lot of people have when they begin to switch to a more whole foods diet. They think it's the healthy foods that are making them sick. But what happens is the body is going through a transition. And it takes a little time to readjust. And that's why gradual changes are better than drastically changing to a healthy diet. Well, right. The way you put it to me was that don't change anything right away as far as your eating habits, but just add the raw fruits and vegetables in addition to what you're doing now, and then try to, over time, eliminate some of the bad stuff and just keep the good stuff coming in. Exactly. And what will happen then, the, the foods that aren't as healthful for you, you'll begin to not desire them anymore. Really? So as you bring in the healthier foods and you begin to get used to the taste, the flavor, the natural flavors, not a lot of sauces and, you know, additives, mm -hmm. to get back to nature, to remember what it's like to 
eat a fresh carrot or fresh broccoli. Um, once you start eating that way, the foods, these foods will enhance everything about your life. It'll change your thoughts, it'll change your moods, and it happens quite quickly. Um, once a person begins to get on this healthy path, they no longer like the way the processed foods make them feel. Yeah. If they then decide, well, I'll have a little piece of cake, oftentimes that sugar then has a really bad reaction mm. once a person is not used to eating, you know, that kind snack of food foods all the way. and things. So it, it goes beyond willpower. It just is a natural transition that a person will go through once they start adding whole healthy foods into their diet. So otherwise they'll have less desire for the bad foods, right. more desire for the whole foods right. and the good foods, and they that will help them spiritually as well as uh, physically. Exactly, because they, they are bringing that connection into their body. Um, really when you think about it, food is the most intimate relationship that we will have in this lifetime. Well, it's the truth. What do you do with uh, your, your friend or you go out on a date or you go, uh, or you go uh, to eat something with a friend and you're eating, you're having food and that's, that's what you have between you and breaking bread and that's a friendship kind of thing and a exactly. closeness kind of thing. Right. Families come together for what? A meal, a dinner. Exactly. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of times people will become so obsessed with healthy eating that they don't allow themselves to enjoy right. dinner out with friends yeah, or a glass yeah. of wine. Mm -hmm. And all of that comes into uh, play in a person's whole healthy life. Yeah. You need to have a good social life right. and be able to sit and enjoy. Well, you can find healthy food in a restaurant if you really look. Well, you just tell Absolutely. them this is the way I want it. Yes, yes. And most restaurants will accommodate oh, sure. people. Sure. Absolutely. And o oftentimes the chef is happy for the challenge of creating something that's not on the menu. That's true. Yeah. Or creating something on the, that is on the menu but making it a little healthier. Right. Not using as much butter or whatever or something like that. You right, know? right. Tell me, what is this, uh, the food-mood con connection? Well, food and mood. A lot of times people, um, they don't feel well. They don't really understand why they don't feel well. They have a lot of vague um, issues. Um, they go to the doctor. The doctor can't figure it out. Oftentimes medication is prescribed. Um, depression can be caused by the foods people eat and when people eat highly processed foods they're not taking any life force into their body they're not assimilating the energy so what happens is the mood becomes depressed or um, depending on a person's diet the, the mood or the tendencies can become very aggressive um, if people are eating meats that are loaded with chemicals and hormones and um, antibiotics, these are what the animals are being fed. Right. And then they're, they're um, taking mm -hmm. that energy into their body mm -hmm. and they're assimilating these negative vibrations. And then you're eating them. And yes. they say you are what you eat. Absolutely. <laughs> right? Absolutely. So people who are eating uh, an animal protein diet, they really want to make sure that they're getting good quality. Um, a free range, chicken, beef that's, you know, grass fed. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to come by, but it's there. People just need to search for it. Right, yeah, well, it's also more expensive, too. That, 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 that stops a lot of people, I think, too. A lot of people are dissuaded from healthy eating because of the price. They, yeah. they would rather not buy organic. Organic is more expensive. Yeah, but what, what else are you going to spend your money on That's besides true. your you have good to eat. health? That's right. right, and you have to eat. And if you're going to eat these kinds of things, you may as well eat the best ones. Exactly. You right. know? Sure. Um, what are the energetics of food and how does, they, how does this affect us? Okay, energetics of food. If, if even whole foods have different energetics and it's based on um, Ayurvedic uh, theories which I every food and the organs in our bodies are related to different seasons of the year, different elements in our environment. So the energetics of food Without complicating it, um, you can look at the way whole foods are growing. In the springtime, a lot of the foods are sprouting. Mm -hmm. They're growing up and out. 
And if you want to feel that energy yourself, and you eat an abundance of these type of foods, your energy will begin to grow and mm -hmm. expand. Sure. Um, in the winter, in the fall and winter time, when we want to feel more warm and cozy, we tend to go for the root vegetables, which are in season at, at that, that time. time. Mm -hmm. So you want to eat with the seasons. You want to eat according to um, what's grown in your region. And these are the things that your body will easily assimilate. Mm -hmm. And it will definitely affect the moods that people will feel. Um, well, that's just like exercise, too. Yes. If you exercise on a regular basis, uh, you find that you're a calmer person, you have more energy to begin with, and your mood is better yep. as well. Right. Exactly. So if you exercise and eat the right foods, you're really going to be euphoric. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take that long before people will begin to feel that change within themselves. Well, does your body kind of release all the toxins and everything once you start with that? Yes, it, it does. It rid of all the bad stuff so that you can enjoy yes. what the good stuff's doing for you? Right. But what will happen is um, what's known as a cleansing crisis or a detoxing um, process. So for a little while, a person may start to bring up issues. It happens on an emotional level also, really? not only physical. Whoa. So a lot of things begin to come up and out when a person changes the foods that they're eating or their lifestyle, exercise habits. Um, the, the negative the things that we hold on to mm -hmm. need to be released. Ah. So we need to re-experience a lot of things that we bury yes. within ourselves. And a lot of um, physical sicknesses are um, held on to because of beliefs or thoughts that yeah. we hold on to. Yeah. So when a person changes their diet and their thoughts begin to change and their feelings begin to change, they can then become a greater channel for spirituality. Uh -huh. And it has to do a lot with um, uh, clearing the chakras. Mm -hmm. And this also allows a person to become more spiritual. So not only diet needs to be looked at, but um, a person's spiritual practice, um, like meditation, for example. Meditation is very good, yes. That's another, another practice that, that, that changes your mood and raises your mood. So if you combine all these things, some exercise, some meditation, some, some uh, uh, changing your diet into uh, eating whole foods, mm -hmm. with all those three put together, you'd probably be a very happy person. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. And that's how we can create a happy society, a peaceful society. Uh -huh. But we start at, at, first we start with ourselves. That's right. And then we, we have a responsibility to our family. Mm -hmm. And then we have a responsibility to our community. Right. And this is the ripple effect of everybody making their own personal choice to be healthy. It then spreads out into the community. What are living foods or what you call high vibration foods? Okay, living foods are the, is a raw food diet. Um, li uh, high vibration foods are super foods. Um, there's healthy foods and then there's exceptional foods. And um, there's a handful of them. Um, well, tell us about them. Well, cacao is one of the superfoods, and what a lot of people don't realize is that's pure chocolate. So you can actually eat what we call chocolate, but it's really cacao. It's very bitter. It's dark chocolate, and it contains um, a lot of magnesium, a lot of things that people actually are lacking when they crave chocolate. So if they ate a little cacao, they'd be fulfilling their nutritional and their chocolate requirements, needs. and they wouldn't be having these cravings, which when people have a craving for chocolate, they're going to go for the Hershey bar. Right, of course. Which is loaded with things you really don't want to eat. Sugar. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So in other words, in the processed chocolate, I mean, this, this processed, like the Hershey bar, comes from this cacao. How do you spell that? C A. C A O cacao. Oh, like co oh C A C A O. Right. Like cocoa almost. Yes. Oh, I yes. see. I see. And now, I, but the, this is like it in the raw then. In other words. Yes, absolutely. It's raw. And um, uh, for some other uh, high vibration foods would be um, maca, 
goji berries, um, or most of the berries, blueberries are considered superfoods. Oh, yeah. The, the berries contain a lot of antioxidants, mm -hmm. which are very good for building your immune system. That's all the berries, huh? Yes. Blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, mm -hmm. blackberries, all right, of those. Right, right, all the small berries. Right. Um, the, the fruits, you want to look for fruits that have seeds. Um, a lot of things these days, uh, they're hybrid. Uh, the, their food, these foods are grown to not have seeds because people find it more pleasant to eat them. Right. But again, the seed is the life force. Uh -huh. So you want to look for your food. You want watermelon with seeds. You want grapes with seeds. Really? Because these are the foods that have that life force. Well, you do. You don't eat the seeds, though. No, but you could. I guess you could. It wouldn't hurt you. Right. Although when I was a kid, I remember being told, don't swallow the watermelon sleeve seeds. Grow a watermelon. Oh, watermelon will grow in your stomach. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. That's but, funny. Oh, I'm sure that won't happen. But <laughs> I don't know why they tell you that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just eat the seeds. <laughs> but uh, another superfood, speaking of seeds, is hemp seed. Hemp is, uh, you know, taboo in our society, but the hemp seed is... Um, very, very nutritious. It's got a perfect ratio of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. Um, and we, we get hemp seed imported from Canada, and it comes shelled. So it's a nice, soft, edible. It's delicious. You can sprinkle it on salads. Hemp seed, H-E-M-P? Yep, hemp seed protein. Hemp seed protein. And you can add stuff like that to smoothies um, on a live diet. Not even know diet. that you're having it, even. And not even know you're having it, right? Although it is delicious. Well, uh, yeah, like they'd say that you know you're having a smoothie. Throw a few leaves of, throw a few leaves of spinach into the, um, into the uh, thing. Right, right. Green smoothies, green drinks. Green drinks. And um, anyway, I don't know what to say. Anyway, mm -hmm. so um, now you were saying that there are a lot of trusted experts in this field. Yes, yes. And um, if anybody is really interested in going deeply into um, spiritual nutrition, Gabriel Cousins is the leading expert in the field. He's got two great books. Uh, Conscious Eating is one of them. And the other one is Spiritual Nutrition and the Rainbow Diet, which was published in 1986. I believe it's out of print. Mm. You can get used copies of it. Maybe find it in the library or something, too. Or find it in the library. So um, if anybody is really interested in, in getting deep into spiritual nutrition, because it does go down to the cellular level, and um, it can get a little mind-boggling, mm. um, to simplify it, eat whole foods. Um, but if you really want to get behind what's going on, Gabriel Cousins explains it in the way of how we as human beings are, we start as a, a energetic being and we have um, several different uh, bodies. We have um, in auric, we have the spiritual, right. and then in, 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 there are seven of them, mm -hmm. but in its densest form, here we are human. It's our physical body. Right. But there are other bodies above us. Absolutely. That are more spiritual, in more spiritual form. Yes. And most people don't realize that these bodies have to be nourished as well. So when, a, when we can um, bring our physical body to a state of optimal health, then we begin to feed these other energetic bodies. That follows. And our physical body then begins to take care of itself. And this explains how people could go, um, you know, all through history there have been great religious leaders who fast, I know. eat m yes. very minimal amounts of food, and they're perfectly healthy because their spiritual being supports the physical body. Right, so th they're able to put themselves into another state. Absolutely, and they don't require so much nutrition <laughs> like we need. Um, a lot of the nutrition that we get, we don't assimilate. So if a person has poor digestion, for example, they could be eating all kinds of healthy foods, but if their body cannot assimilate it, they're not absorbing the nutrients. So the key is to get your body to a healthy point 
so that you can start feeding your spiritual side and then your spiritual body will take care of your physical body. Mm -hmm. Well, you have a plan for doing that, right? I do, yes. <laughs> um, it's like a six month plan right? where you meet with people for a course of six months and they learn how to how to do this, how yes. to make these changes into um, eating whole, 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 foods, whole, whole foods, incorporating them into their diet right. and, and, it, and, and slowly making the transition. Very slowly, over exactly. Over the course of six months. Right, because it's hard enough to make small changes. Um, so through my six month program, I would meet with a client every other week and this way they're held accountable. Um, they know they're coming back to see me in two weeks, so they want to come back and say I followed the recommendations. Sometimes they'll come back and say these recommendations don't work for me. We need to try something else. So every six-month program is completely customized to my client's individual needs. So it, it, each, each program will work differently. Some people really just want to work on um, the other areas of their life. And that's the holistic approach. It includes a lot more than just food. Um, are they being nourished um, through their family? Do they have a career that inspires them? Do they have good, uh, fun, physical activities going on? These other areas are very nourishing. It's not just about the food. So sometimes a person is on a very good diet, but yet they don't understand why they don't feel good because they're lacking, they're starving in other areas of their life. So I not only help people improve their diet, I help them find balance in all these areas. Oh, that's wonderful, that really is. And, you, uh, and, and during the course of this, you were telling me, during the course of this six month program, you have classes where they learn how to make meals and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and eat them and everything. And, yes. And so that they learn how to actually cook this way. Exactly. Included with the individual sessions, there are 12 sessions in a six month program, yeah. but um, I also give monthly workshops so that all of my clients can come together as a group mm -hmm. and then they get to enjoy like-minded people right. because a lot of times the path to wellness is, um, is isolated. Mm -hmm. um, you find yourself alone. Other people, uh, they're challenged by the changes, so you know you're you're not included with the parties and the dinners, and because mm -hmm. you're on this healthy path. Mm -hmm. So um, through the six month program, I like to bring the community together, and I do that through monthly workshops. That's great. That's and w with the food prep classes, I do raw food prep classes. I'm not a raw foodist, but I do the raw food prep classes because I want people to see how much you can do with some fruits and vegetables. You, right, you can sure. make a five course meal raw I'm sure. with fruits and vegetables. Wow. So I like to share that with, with my clients. Oh, that, that's very good. You have one of these uh, little charts that you, that you brought with you. Maybe we mm -hmm. can put that up and, and you can explain all that. It talks about spirituality and nutrition. Okay, yep. And if they're ready to put it up, we can put it up. In the meantime, while, uh, while they're uh, doing it, um, you would tell, oh, here it is. Okay, tell us about this now. Okay. Spirituality, physical activity. Go ahead, tell, okay. tell us all about that. So this, this food pyramid, it's, it's, it's roughly based on the USDA food pyramid, which has now been changed and updated. Very good. But, uh -huh. th so this, this uh, food pyramid right here, you can see that um, the basis of the pyramid is complex carbohydrates. Complex carbohydrates are not a bad thing. They're the good carbohydrates. This is the good carbohydrates. Not and the ones from eating a lot of white bread. Exactly. All the white stuff, white sugar, white flour, white rice, they're, they're, they're nutrient deficient, so you don't even want to waste your time with them. Right. Complex carbohydrates are brown rice. Um, salads? Well, salads do con don't really contain a lot of carbohydrates. Mm. Carbohydrates are more of the... Um, the potatoes, the, the brown rice, the quinoa, mm -hmm. all of the grains, right. and there are a lot of grains. So now you're saying that those are the foods that are on the bottom there that take up the most space are the ones that we should be eating more of. Right, oatmeal, things like that. And at the top is fat, so that should be the least. Yes. Now in between, you'll see fruits and vegetables. Mostly you want to eat vegetables. You can eat an abundance of vegetables. You can never eat too many. And there's a lot that are absolutely free. Yeah, 
Right. You know, that you can eat so, as much as you want without, I mean, you can kill yourself on them if you want to. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right? Um, sure, broccoli, um, cauliflower. Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Some people need to be careful with mushrooms. Yeah. Um, because it, it, mu mushrooms are a fungus. Ah. So depending, it's, if, if a person has an issue with sugar or yeast or anything like that, they want to stay away from um, fungus types of foods, fermented types of foods. Mm -hmm. So this is how you can see it really depends on the individual. And I love um, mushrooms. Yeah, <laughs> especially portobello mushrooms. Right. So <laughs> it's like a little steak. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's good. Um, so, okay, so the food uh, pyramid, around the food pyramid, you also have the other aspects, which are spirituality, career, um, exercise, and friendships. And then you also want to have uh, fresh air, clean water, things like that, which are, are very important. Water is so important in oh, a healthy yeah, we diet. Have to, we have to stay uh, hydrated. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hydration is very, it's, and it's not only good for your body, but it's good for your skin, too. Right. And if you drink a lot of water, your skin will be clearer. Yes, right. Yes. And also, it helps you um, to sweat, and when you sweat, you release toxins. Mm -hmm. So you want to continually have enough water so that your body doesn't retain this stuff. That's right, yeah, yeah. And I, I retain water, that's for sure. Mm. <laughs> well, tell us now, you had experiences that led you to this kind of eating habits yeah. you weren't always like this right right exactly So what happened well it happened kind of magically um, you know when when the student is ready the teacher appears right. and it was kind of like I was at a point in my life where I ne I knew I wasn't feeling well a lot of vague illnesses and uh, life just wasn't happening the way I wanted it to mm -hmm. and um, I, what I did was I opened, I happened to open the paper and I, this was several years, this was about eight, ten years ago. And at the time I signed up for a Boston Age Ride, the ad said uh, impossible, the word impossible, but it had a little apostrophe, so it was actually I'm possible. And I saw that ad and it really resonated with me and it, I ch it changed my life, that was the turning point in my life. And I joined the Age Ride and in order to be able to ride my bicycle, I had to begin to change my diet. I wanted to really enjoy this ride and the training, the bike riding that, you know, leads up to the four-day ride. So I had to begin to eat healthy foods and I began to really notice what a change it made in how I felt, how I looked, my level of energy, my thinking, my moods. And it was a transformational year for me. It was unbelievable. I started drinking wheatgrass juice every day. And it was as if the whole world just opened up to me. Um, I got through that year, and um, what happened after that was I, I eventually became vegetarian. I went on a vegetarian diet. And people, uh, through learning and putting myself in the right place, I met a lot of wonderful teachers. I met yoga teachers, raw food prep teachers. And I ended up meeting a holistic health counselor who offered me a six-month program. And when I went through her six-month program, I realized there's tremendous value in this process, and people really need this. Mm -hmm. So I went to school to become a holistic health counselor. So this has kind of been, um, a, a, over the past 10 years, gradual changes in my, so that my life became magical. And it started with just changing the foods I was eating. Hmm. So I feel that it's just so important to share this with people now. Sure. 